Okay, so, so far I've tried two types of coloring on each of mine. I've tried uh, just flat coloring, and then I tried duotone. This is what's called cut edge or hard edge duotone on the rabbit, where it's a really crisp distinction between the highlights and the shadows. And then on my bird, I've tried soft edge duotone. So this is the flat color, and then the duotone over the top. And then I could add just different variations in blue as I wanted to. And by doing them as separate layers underneath my vector layer, I can use opacity and I can kind of layer them into each other. So I can get a duotone that I like. I can even set, set them up to be multiply mode, play with opacity there. So there's all kinds of different ways that you can alter and adjust your color. And that helps make up for my lack of uh, black line work in the tail. And I can use gradient overlays. And I can make them more specific. So here, this is just duotone. But duotone is two or more tones of one local color. So I can add to my duotone and add a darker color, right? as long as it's within the same hue family. Kind of shift that in, and I kind of like how that looks, right? And then I'm going to erase away a little bit from this layer on top. So I have soft edge color, and I have hard edge duotone color, but what I don't have is a lot of different local colors. I just have a red local color for the bunny and a blue local color for the bird. What if I wanted to make the bird's legs a different local color, right? Because bird's legs aren't blue. So I need to go back to my flat color layer, and this is why it all starts with flat color. And I need to select around just that, that coloring. So I'm going to use my lasso. Again, compositing skills. I'm going to select those legs. And then I'm also going to select the beak. Right. And then I can add to this selection. I'm holding down shift with contiguous turned on. Or maybe not. <laughs> I can use my lasso and I can select within the eye as well. And so this is kind of the grunt work of flatting. And now for that color, I'm going to choose something else. I'm going to go to another color reference, and I'm going to steal from this yellow. So I'm going to open this up, up in Photoshop. Come on, open up. Computer is a little sluggish. Now the reason I have to open it in Photoshop, not in Preview or something else, is so that I can actually steal the color directly with the ink, with the eyedropper tool. You can only steal if it's open, if it's open in Photoshop. But I can move it into one of my little nest, nested palettes here. All right, so now this is what I'm selecting. I'm going to use my um, paint bucket. I'm going to do it onto my flat color layer. And I'm going to hold down Option and steal this yellow. And then drop it in. In all of these different areas. <coughs> and kind of separating it out. This is what we call flatting. And it can be a real pain, <laughs> especially, especially if your coloring is really kind of broken up. So let's see. I'm going to turn off my vector here so you can see what the color layer is doing. The computer is not super happy. 
and I'm just replacing all of these little formerly blue specks that are trapped in between my vector shapes and I'm filling them with yellow. And then for the eye and for the beak, let's fill it all in. Okay. So you can see flatting at work there on the bird. Now let's layer up the duotone on top of that. And you see it kind of works but it also takes out a lot of that flatting. The yellow is slightly there, it's layering over the top. That works a little bit better, so you can see the duotone there and there. So it's the gradient fill that's a problem. So if I want to make it so the gradient fill isn't a problem, I can simply erase away from it in different tones. like so. And then I can add my black line work on top. And you can see that color come through. And I can decide how much of this duotone coloring I actually want. And I can always play with opacity. Right. I can even play with different layer styles like dissolve. which breaks up that gradient overlay into distinct little sand pattern pixels. That can look pretty good. So all of that's duotone. What if I wanted to play with a different thing? So my duotone for soft edge got a little complicated. So I'm going to simply uh, put those all into a folder together that I call night duotone soft, right? And then I have my flat color underneath. Even though my flat color has multiple colors, that's the flatting of different local colors. And if I want the inside of the eye to be white, I actually need to paint it in with white. Right? Okay. So. I'm going to make a duplicate of the background white and I'm going to fill that with black just so you can see how the colors are working. And I'm going to do another one where I, that I just fill it with gray. So you notice where I painted the white in the coloring for the bird, the white's there. That's important, but for the bunny it's not there. So I also need to add that white to the bunny's flat color. And to do that, I'm simply going to use the paint bucket and fill that with white. Right, so there it is. Then I'm also going to fill a background layer with middle gray. And that way I can see the whites and I can see the blacks on top. And that's how this design would print on a colored background, like a t-shirt. So whenever I'm making a spot illustration, I try to have three different colors behind it, or three different backgrounds behind it, rather. White, black, and middle gray. So I can see how it would work on all three of those. So now the last type of color I can play with, besides flat color and duotone, is called full spectrum color. And full spectrum color is more like this inspiration Come on. from a painter and it basically means that instead of only working with tones of the local color you can introduce new spectrum colors into the local color you can think of it as lighting charlie brown's yellow shirt with 
a green flashlight, right? And that will introduce new tones. So for full spectrum color, I'm going to bring in a new inspiration in Photoshop. One of this painting. So I'm going to open it up with Photoshop. It's got a lot more colors than just blue, yellow, and red. It's got all this crazy stuff. This is not digital coloring. This is actually a traditional painting. But I'm going to use it for color inspiration. Bring it in here. And so what kind of crazy experiment do I want to do? Well, you always want to keep it on a separate layer. So I'm going to take my another duplicate of my bunny flat color layer. I'm going to move it up above, and I'm going to call this full spectrum. where I can use any colors I want. And then I'm going to use the eyedropper tool and I'm going to bring in some of this kind of greenish yellow. And I'm going to first select all of it and then just use the paintbrush within it with this new color at these different opacities. So I'm going to bring that yellow in and kind of augment my red a little bit. So I still have my brush on multiply mode. I want to just set it to normal. Remember all your brush settings are up here. I want to keep it at a low opacity. And you can see I'm giving some now some different color notes within my flat color. The rabbit is not just red anymore. He's red and orange and yellow. And I can steal the colors from myself. And I can bring some of those oranges in. And by first using the magic wand to select just my flatting flat color, I'm not worried about going outside of the lines. Now let's bring in some of these, these greens. Green is the complement of red, so this should go into the shadows. That's going to be the most effective use. And this still isn't digital painting, even though it's using full color theory like painting does, because it's coloring behind a real or implied outline. OK, then I'm going to bring in some of the blue. I'm doing this all in the same layer, but I could split these up into different, you know, multiple layers if I wanted. And some of this really deep red. Again, brush tool. Come on, computer, keep up with me. And the, um, the option key to steal color. Now what's fun is kind of combining all of them because you always start with flat color. That makes everything easier. Ah, my computer's having trouble keeping up with everything. Because you always start with flat color, then if you move on to duotone, and then only if you really want it do you move on to full spectrum, you can start combining them in, in interesting ways using opacity. I can even steal some blue from my bird. Paint a little bit of that in, right? To make this more full spectrum. Now I'm using a soft brush. If I wanted more of a cut edge look, even though this is full spectrum and not duotone, I could simply just sharpen the brush. We're not getting into customized brushes yet, not until we do digital painting, but all of it relates. Then I'll show you one last thing we could do. I could just take a big kind of cutout of this craziness in color. I can copy it. I can paste it and transform it. Notice it's not very high resolution, right? And I could composite in kind of crazy color too, if I want to, just like we did with our cartoon jumble. So there we go. Now, how can I cut that out nicely? 